Hello, uh, my name is Samad. I'm going to talk about how to write a good abstract or what is an abstract. In your abstract, you need to mention what is the importance of your research or project and it is a summary of your thesis or paper or your grant application and you need to write the abstract accurately and concisely and include the most important content. So here you can see three different references are listed so one of them is about how to write a good scientific paper you can say job and find this paper or open this file uh, in front of you the other one is about measuring installation productivity this is an uh, like a structured uh, abstract just as an example I will analyze it in this video the other one is on a structured abstract so the third one I'm going to show this abstract to you as well so based on these two examples you can understand how you can draft your abstract my recommended style is a structured abstract so you will try to you may try to draft something similar okay I'm going to show you the example here first so you need to open it up and the paper is about measuring installation productivity in prefabricated timber construction so the publisher is emerald and uh, we go back to this paper so the paper is about uh, yes so you can see the abstract here there are a couple of sections purpose or problem or design finding originality and value this is my this style i've adopted but of course different people they have different ideas i'm going to show you another paper like the first reference i talked i showed to you how to write a good scientific abstract so this paper is useful and gives you some ideas about different sections of an abstract for example they say background motivation and context can be the first section of the abstract then aim objective and problem statement i will tell you how you can link these items together like aim and problem how this can be linked to each other these two and approach or methods and results and conclusion of course we have different kind of uh, categorization and it's up to you to adopt one of them I'm going to show you one example here and analyze it so I just going to show you I've done that before and I will show you how we can analyze it and write the abstract by ourselves okay so but you may ask why the abstract is important again Previous scholars believe that the purpose of the title itself, like this title here, the title is to ask people or get someone reading the title first and then to read the abstract. So the purpose is to read the abstract and, and someone reading the abstract to go further and read the paper itself so there are different types of abstract as i said in terms of content and structure and in terms of content it can be descriptive it can be informative descriptive abstract can be between 100 to 200 words this abstract indicates uh, type of the information found in your paper mainly presents purpose purposes uh, objectives and methods of your work and it usually ignores results and conclusions but an informative abstract like this one is the most common type of abstracts and are used for journals and dissertations these abstracts are surrogate of the research paper and summarizes all parts of your paper or your thesis in terms of a structure also we have two different types of abstract I've showed you, you a couple of examples and one of them is a structure the other one is unstructured if you want to submit it to a journal they may, they may tell you uh, to provide a structured abstract however the unstructured version 
is the most common type uh, I like to start I like this structured abstract because this style separates different sections clearly which looks easy to read and understand the word there are common mistakes such as lack of balanced coverage you may hold back important points or information you may also include references do not put any reference in your abstract and it can be too lengthy some of your abstracts can be too long up to 500 words but needs to be shorter than 500 words a little bit but it depends on the structure of the uh, journal and daily instructions and also in my case I have my own instructions another common mistake is copy paste some people they copy the first line of their introduction in the abstract or copy some sentences from conclusions this is so strange and do not copy sentences from the body of your thesis proposals or papers for your abstract it should be rewritten most of abstracts they have four or five sections so i showed you but the first one is purpose or problem how we can link both of them like purpose and problem or just mention one of them so we can say here i'm going to show you an example so what you need to say what problem does your research is going to solve what is the motivation the scope of the project the main argument thesis or claim so it is recommended to begin this section with wording such as the purpose of this paper is blah blah or the paper this paper aims to do something to present something the opening sentence should be very clear and the, you need to start with a clear sentence but if you want to mention the problem before that so in other words if you want to justify why this is your aim then the uh, opening sentence can be something with which is a bit problematic or is a big motivation so you say a problematic issue is blah 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 and then you say for example insufficient productivity measurement data so it has also a consequence as well in increased pricing behavior when you clarify what is the problem then you can start writing your purpose very clear so you say the purpose is to measure installation productivity on site for prefabricated timber floor cassette panels and also you develop something else as well so that's about purpose and problem the next section is about method or design methodology approach of your work so an abstract of a scientific work may include specific models or approaches or you may describe the types of evidence used in the research you're not gonna have a lot of space to go to the to a great details of your method but it's not enough to say my method is qualitative or quantitative only uh, with taking with talking about the sample size or some other uh, necessary information you can make it more clear if you use a common instrument in in our field like a survey you don't need to say how important is the instrument or the saver you need to address several questions such as how your your objectives achieve include the main methods that you used for your research what is the approach to the topic and what is the theoretical or subject scope of your paper you can see here we say we use the word like approach generate qual quantitative data enable a statistical analysis some general words related to method but some specific ones as well like we use time and motion we use time lapse photograph uh, photography and also in terms of the data set or the number of 
observations or the sample size that you need to mention you can say 300 crane cycles was observed so you can you can mention some specific figures here and give an idea about your data set your data profile how valuable is it how big is it and then you need to talk about your finding so an abstract of your work may include the most significant results specific data that indicates the results of your project if you have more than one result or finding then you don't need to mention all of them just the most important one you may discuss the findings so you can tell the reader what was found in the course of the work this uh, will refer to analysis interpretation discussion or qualitative or quantitative results so here yeah, you say the author show that crane cycle speed is correlated to productivity so that's the specific um information here and also the results show that so that's very clear we are going to talk about the results here and then the productivity rate is between below and below so this is about the productivity rate here and you can see the productivity rate is given or found and this is exactly what we promised at the beginning because here we say there is insufficient productivity measurement data and that's why the purpose is to measure installation proper productivity so we are going to measure it and this is the purpose purpose we we promised this one and here we say okay found it productivity rate are between 69.38 and blah 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 so that's the productivity measure and also we say this we can compare or give more specific information higher than the data set inclusive of outlier cycles so this is much more in um, a specific result and also later we said something that shows we compared the data set uh, with in terms of the size we compared actually sub data sets so it says more insight into the data so large cassettes also prove to be more productive to place than smaller ones so this is much more uh, detailed than the previous ones okay so this is about funding or results of your work and then the next section before we talk about originality or value here we, you can insert one section or one paragraph talking about implications very important but it should be applicable to your research sometimes it's not applicable so you ignore it and then you talk about the value or originality only but if if it's relevant then you can talk saying that implications you can clarify any practical or theoretical applications from your findings there are different types of implications theoretical implications practical implications social implications in the in terms of theoretical implications you can tell us how your work will add to the body of knowledge and also may include suggestion for future research and any identified limitations in the research process can be mentioned here practical implications what outcomes and implications for practice and applications are identified you can talk about that what changes to practice should be made as a result of your research and also social implications you need to clarify the impact of your research on society public attitudes social responsibility environmental issues quality of life how could your research inform public or industry policy so that's all about implications as i said this is about your research if you have done your research then you, you can report it what is or what was uh, observed and found and then you talk about the value of that but if you haven't done your research yet then you need to 
use maybe present tense or future tense and talk about I'm doing right now you do something or in the future so you expect that kind of benefit or implications okay the last section here in this example is originality or value of the work what is new or novel in your paper clarify the value of your paper and to whom so here you can see we used a couple of words like general words or signal words like contribution of this research or the other yellow one here is it provides a different perspective that's a novel or different things and analyze the analysis we have done offers a high degree of detail accuracy and objectivity not apparent in other productivity studies so this makes our work different than others so you can use that kind of general words or keywords and then you can talk about your the value of your work and what is that and what added value to your research a specific analysis method you have used and what is the value of that again enabling quantitative benchmarking with other projects so you need to have all these sections to have a good abstract at the end of course you can write your keywords some keywords can be less than nine words that you use them frequently or you will use them in your paper or thesis so this was a, a, a structured abstract and I'm going to show you an example of uh, unstructured abstract I already opened up another one here you can see okay the, the next paper is about implementing citizen centering technology in developing uh, smart cities a model for predicting the acceptance of urban technologies so here you can see there is uh, an unstructured abstract of course keywords are here this journal has a different format but we are going to analyze this bit a little bit and then I'm going to show you how this abstract drafted so this abstract is like like a storytelling uh, abstract it's unstructured and it talks about what is important what is the main motivation talking about for example talking about uh, for example the smart cities story a little bit giving a background what is that in terms of like research uh, in developing countries or in universal uh, aspiration uh, without taking into consideration such a local such local cultural differences so talking about globally is blah blah and then locally maybe we haven't uh, uh, done a lot of research about the local scale or at the local scale so that is something pro presents a little bit motivation or problem or lack of knowledge uh, that kind of things and then you say the future task what is the future task the future task should be this one two three four and that's why this study intends or this study is going to integrate the literature different di from different aspects like this is technology acceptance modeling is like a theory or like a model you're touching this model to develop a framework and the method we are going to use is a structural equation modeling method this is a specific statistical or advanced statistical analysis and of course when we are doing that we we need to use the data from a survey so we we've got a survey based method and what we produced is a model so based on this technology acceptance model we used urban services technology acceptance model so we modified the model or extended the model so this is an example of an uh, unstructured abstract so it can be written in so many different ways everyone can write it in a different way saying the same thing but 
using different words different structures or using a different style of writing okay so at the end you talk about the value of your work how valuable is it how significant is it and we use significant couple of times here significant for whom significant for what and then uh, yeah so talking a little bit about the implications and benefits to the society or community so that is again another unstructured abstract so you can see both of those abstracts uh, are published in high quality q1 journals it can be useful to you and you can draft your abstract now thank you for watching the video